I'm going to share this video of this uh, 1955 Stoner Theater candy machine that I've had for some time that uh, was in storage for a little bit and then um, I moved and so I've been going through some machines trying to sort out what inventory I'd like to keep and what I'm going to be selling. So um, this one here, I'm just right on the fence. So um, got this about eight years ago at an auction and really haven't done anything with it. It's just been sitting um, for uh, the whole time. And um, I had it working a couple times and then it's sat for a while and then it gets dirty and it stops working. But uh, I think I got it back to working today. And um, I'll just share with you some of the features on the machine. So this one here has the uh, light up marquee on the front. So if you turn the lights on here, the lights turn on and then there's a uh, bulbs on the top of the marquee and then there's a bulb by the entry bezel where you put the coin in. So when the theater's dark, you can actually see the machine from a distance and you can uh, go over there and it would attract you to buy some merchandise. Um, this one here's a 1955 uh, model on the shorter base, which is kind of neat because it's not so tall. Some of the bases are you know, six or eight inches taller. So this one here is uh, on the smaller base. It has a lower storage compartment where you can put some of the um, product that you decide that you want to keep near the machine. If you um, were on a route or something like that, you could uh, show up and, and restock the machine so you didn't have to carry as much stuff in or have some stuff on, on location. So this one here, um, it's got the original mirror with a added decal that I had put on it. I don't think that's original to the machine as far as the um, the style of decals that were to go on the machine. And it's got eight selections and um, it's got a nickel change giver inside. So if you were to give uh, two dimes uh, for a 15 cent purchase, you'd be able to get um, five cents back. There's been some price adjustments to this machine because it says 35 cents. So um, I have had it working on a dime but it has been a little bit finicky, so I need to still spend some time working on the coin mechanism. So um, you can see that um, from the side, you've got your, your lock here, which is your storage compartment that opens up the door. And then this is the inside of the machine. So when you're looking at stoner machines, you'll look at the top here and it's gonna tell you the year with the first two numbers. So this is a 55 model and um, the coin mechanism is as well. So if you look at the different columns, you've got your eight columns with your price bars down here. When you adjust these price bars, it changes the amount of money that it requires because it activates um, the pricing bars for the coin mechanism. So you can see on this side, you have different price bars uh, on the coin mechanism to adjust it to go from um, a different uh, price. Um, Per selection, so you can actually change the price per selection. So, depending on what the um, sold out flag says at the top, it will say the price. So, when you open up the compartment here, this this um, is where you put your product here, and then these flags move back and forth, which have the price on them. So, when you have the all the shelves at the top um, still not vended, this pushes the flag down back and forth. And then that displays the price. So you could have um, different prices per column based on whatever you have on the flag of the um, of the machine per, per column. So um, this is your selection glass here or your, your product display that would tell you what you're going to be vending. So uh, some older selections here, but um, you can see that if I were to have that product in there, it would tell you which one to put in there. Then you can see here you have your nickel changed giver uh, tube right here so you put your nickels in there and then depending on how you have this configured um, and operating and gone through you could um, get nickel change back if um, you had it working properly i don't have any nickels in there and i haven't tested that operation um, so far i've just put a diamond in it's worked a couple times so there's your coin mechanism down there and then to reset these trays you you just run your index finger here is a little spot for it. You can go there. You can see there's a little spot right here for your finger. It's kind of hard to see, but you can actually put your finger uh, right here, and that helps kind of get the first one. And then you can work your way up. 
So um, these are your selections. So you've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this is your delivery tray. And there's actually a pad down here. So when the candy dropped, it actually dampened the sound so it wasn't so loud in the theater. It's like a little foam pad. It's hard to see. It's pretty weathered, but um, that's your... Um, your um, spot where the candy is delivered when the door is shut. And then I have an extra set of theater bulbs that are in the bottom that were reproduced a couple of years ago. I purchased those to have available. Those are these little kind of marble bulbs here. They're kind of hard to find. So I uh, purchased some that were available just to store back away. That way if one of these broke, I wouldn't have to go look for one. Uh, extremely difficult to find just one. So I bought a whole set. And so, um, when the door's shut, um, you can take the key out, and then you can see the lower uh, storage compartment is a key for that as well. So that actually opens up, and you can see I've got those bulbs down there, and then I've got an old decal down there. I haven't opened this in a while, but I put the bulbs in there that way I wouldn't lose them. So they're in there with the machine, and then um, I think I've got this working, so... I've got selection uh, product in the good and plenty selection, so let's see if we can get that to work. Probably won't work. I've only had it going a couple times, so put the dime in here and see if we can get a event. And we did. So you can see there that I had that uh, drop. You can do it again if you want to see that again. I've just been using the same column. I'm sure that the other columns work, but um, I'll have to have the price bar set properly. So if you don't set the price bars, it might be uh, more more money. So I've got the that price bar is set for 10 cents at the moment. So that makes it easy to show that it's working uh, from selection four. Again, you'd have to set your price bars to the right price, so you could have a uh, different amount of money per selection. So. Put that diamond again, and it kind of drops real slow. I heard it drop at the very end there, and then should um, bend the product out. So, yeah, this is a 1955 uh, Stoner Theater machine. Um, it is complete and working. Um, I um, bought this from the third owner. He had bought it from a school, dis a school district um, that had it at a bus station. And before that, it sat in the Liberty Theater in Wenatchee, Washington. That's actually where I'm from. So this is kind of a neat machine um, that I've had uh, for quite some time. And then behind it, I have um, a seven pole with the uh, the gum wheel, which is a fairly neat machine. It's, uh, it, you know, it's pretty common, but uh, this one here is in pretty good condition. Um, has never been shopped out or anything. It's just all original. Um, and that one there has the selection knob um, for uh, vending Menser gum. So pretty much the same as the theater. It's just, uh, well, not the same, but pretty similar uh, look to it. Just there's not any light bar on the top. And um, there's a gum wheel on that left side there, which you can select for Menser gum. Uh, this also has a change giver in it as well. And so that kind of makes it neat as well because you can change the prices inside and then you'd be able to um, change, uh, get, get change back. So um, I found this is easier to remove the coin mechanisms and make them free play. But if you want them working, then you gotta make sure that they're there at least at a minimum so you have something to work with. Um, they make mechs that are only nickels only. They make some that are dimes only. Uh, there's some that are set for a quarter. So they changed them out over the years. So you gotta kind of know what you want to do with it and that way you don't uh, have it not working the way you want it. So uh, to make it free play, there's an adjustment inside the mechanism where you can make it free. So if you look down here, this one here, there's a, this is for the guy that's doing the work on the machine. You can just bring this out. And then this one here has this little bar here. I haven't seen that before. Generally, I've just seen this position in the this is in the out position to uh, to get free play. So right now it's it's hitting this uh, stop right here. So I'm not sure if this was put in uh, at a later date. I have not seen um, 
where you have to have uh, two different functions for it to be free play. But um, yeah, that's everything. From the inside, you can kind of see uh, the dime drops and it goes in. And then you can kind of watch the price bar. You'll see this location here where it moves back and forth. And then um, you can reach down here and this would be where you get the money back. There's actually a drawer that goes in there that's on the other side of the machine here. So again, you drop the dime in and then you can see this is the column that we're vending from. That drops the tray, gets everything working. Um, honestly, I haven't tried another column, so we'll just try it real time here and see if another column is set. So um, that's see the difference in that price bar is this one is in the out position for 10 cents. This one's pushed in, so we're gonna move this one to match the same as this one and see if it works. Okay, so something's not working right. So we're gonna try that one. So it's very possible that something is jammed, kind of locking that one up. So uh, we can try another one and see if that one works. I haven't spent a lot of time on this machine, so it needs to be worked. So. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. So not working 100%, but um, I think with some uh, persistence and some cleaning, I can get everything working. Um, I know it works when I bypass the, um, the coin mechanism to free play, so we know it's not an issue with the actual mechanism trays. It's actually just an issue with the coin mechanism because um, we can remove the, the coin mechanism from the machine if you look at this position here, this is designed to remove from the machine. So you can actually take this out of the machine. So you, you lift this lever uh, which is right here. You lift this lever, you pull this lever down, and then you bring this guy out, and then you lift up. And that should be able to get you trying to do this one handed. So that guy comes out. And then this is your mechanism here uh, that, that is supposed to be working. So now, with, with it out, everything should work just fine. It's be working very good. So these price bars need to be adjusted and the coin mechanism needs to a good cleaning. Uh, but you can tell, again, that there really isn't an issue with the... Oh, we got an issue there, so I stand corrected. So we got some business going on here. So let's see what's going on down here. So um, uh, it just looks like that spring is a little bit loose down there. So there's a spring on that rod. Yep, and it is. Um, it is not. I don't think it's attached. Um, well, I'll have to look at it. So. That one is not working. Let's see. Let's see what that one. Okay, that's the one that's not working. Okay, so now it's working. So but it was just stuck on that one. So you can see if you just kind of stick with this, you can kind of get them working. But the best way to do would be to take this mechanism out of the machine. Uh, with these two screws here and there's some bolts in the back and this whole mechanism comes out and you can clean everything. Uh, some guys have power washed them and then uh, you air dried them with a hose and that way you can kind of get them uh, cleaned up and working. So definitely a project uh, to some degree, but it's got some really good bones and um, that's a good thing. So, yep. So if you have any questions, you can, uh, you can comment um, or um, send me an email. Thanks.